today's sponsor is still Mrs. Mayer's Mummy Milk. And I've been told that we need to apologise for last week because of what Jeff said. But actually, there's nothing wrong with drinking this milk. Um, we're, we're not saying that it's necessarily uh, good for you. It's a high, high calorie. Um, it's part of a balanced diet. Um, but it's nothing to do with the uh, coronavirus. Um, it's uh, it's completely um, it's just it's completely out of it's just nothing to do with it. Okay, it so just, like, no. just well, just need to. It's been, it's been all those rumours and all this. It's just don't. It's not talk about. It's just not it. No okay? one knows. Well, I mean, nobody knows what's happening at the moment now. It's nothing to do with the mummy milk. Okay, it's fine. You can order it online now, um, and we've been drinking it, and we're been, we're fine. I, I'm not. I've been drinking loads of it. I don't know what they put in that, but it's addictive stuff. And like you say, it's high calorie content, and it's been making me feel quite strange. And, <sighs> Hey everybody, welcome to On The Record with Des and Jeff and uh, today we're going to be talking about the classic, classic album uh, which has a lot to do with what's going on at the moment actually because someone ate a bat and it could have been a bat out of hell and it could have been put in a meatloaf and this is what we're talking about, it's Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell, all time classic uh, album, right Jeff? So classic. It beggars belief, actually, that it's taken us this long to get onto talking about it. But I suppose that just speaks to the uh, the, the quality of the previous albums uh, mm. we've we've covered. Um, quick question: Can I just ask? Is his name actually first name Meat, second name Loaf? I believe so. Um, right. Yeah, his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Loaf, um, when he was born, they took a look at him and they just went, "Fuck me, that's just a big pile of eviscerated meat." So when he's introduced <laughs> when he's a kid or whatever, oh. they would. Sorry about that. Were, Bang, that's, 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 sorry, mummy's sorry. not repeating on me again. But, uh, wow. Really, yeah. people shouldn't be drinking that. that don't yeah, if you don't don't just don't Jeff. take my word for it. Oh, this God. is made of mummy milk. Just it's we a need slippery it. slope. We need the sponsorship. Okay, we need the money. They've given us a second chance. Let's not ruin it. So let me let me just ask you, right? So let me get this straight. When 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 little tiny loaf. Mini loaf was taken into the school. People would go around and go, meet, meet. Well, meet, well, meet, why Chris. Why would they say meet, meet? Meet, meet. Meet, meet, Chris. Chris, meet, meet. No, it's called, meet. Doing it's called meet, not meet, meet. Yeah, but they would say, you know, a, when you like say, des, des. Well, you know, when it's like, you know, when it's like, oh, Jeff, meet Nancy. Not that I'd ever introduce you to a girl, and then I'd say like Nancy, meet Jeff. Um, you're when saying if, like the meet M E E T, and what I'm saying, so they would be like meet, meet Jeff, oh, Jeff I see. meets meet. I see, I see. Or they might just say meatloaf. But that doesn't what meatloaf. Well, I I, it, maybe he went maybe to public, like public school or something. Maybe he went to public school. We used to have to say like, oh, hello, welcome, meatloaf. People don't just walk up to him and go meatloaf. No, but they, they, say, they say meet because when you're, you know, you refer to more by your surname. Well, it's the same so meat meat loaf. Meat meat loaf. Meat meat probably loaf. just gone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's that's great. Well, let's let's uh, go into take a little dive into this album then. Um, what are some of the the hot tracks on this? Oh, all of them. Well, because we're getting criticised a little bit for not talking much about the album. So you can we let's just talk about the the songs, I suppose. Well, okay. I mean, it's not meant to be a deep dive kind of show, is it, on the record? We try to give you, you know, just like the top line, a bit of a summary of why it's so classic, you know, what the impact of the album's been. But if, yeah, I mean, let's go Let's go track by track. I mean, there's only seven songs here, so we can probably get it done pretty quickly. God, how long's the album? What, five minutes? No, because they're all really long. I mean, oh, that's Jesus. that's probably the weakness of this album. Um, needed a good edit. Yeah. Well, it's, I, mean, I imagine it's, you know, they couldn't wait to get this album out. Yeah, yeah probably just rushed it out straight out of hell uh, yeah. into your ears. Um, yeah, like the first song here is Bat Out of Hell. 
and it's nearly 10 minutes long. I mean, that's almost as long as a third of an episode of Keeping Up Appearances. Jesus, how long does it take this bat? Seriously, come oh. on. Well, no, you I took th- the words right out of my mouth, Des. Right. Because yeah. that's the next song. Oh, is it? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, oh, right. Good one, that. A very, um, you know, we've gone from Bat Out of Hell, which is like a big, exciting rocker, mm-hmm. to um, a sort of like a sort of sad, reflective ballad where Meatloaf puts his emotions out uh, on the line. Um, quite a brave thing to do. For a, for a tough, fat man. Yeah, well, it sounds like as if, like, he's being a bit lazy and someone's, you know, doing the writing for him. Maybe it's, he's saying, maybe it's a little, maybe it's someone doing the lyrics and they're like, a uh, bit sick of Meatloaf. Going, well, oh, yeah, you t- took the words right out of my mouth, buddy. Put that down, because I'm the lyric is. You've hit the nail on the head there, Tez. Because um, maybe, maybe you just want to call it something like, you know, um, tonight or something like that, or like, oh, hello, hottie, or something like that. Well, that's, I mean, this, that's the thing. If Meatloaf has been left to his own devices, God knows what rubbish he'd have come up with. Um, but famously, all of this was written by like his, his songwriting partner. Um, so he, the other man wrote all the songs, and Meatloaf was just like this, like, blustery, fat man that, that sang them all. Oh my god, it's disgusting. Well, what are some of the other tracks on this then? It, heaven Can Wait. Why are they talking about hell and then heaven? I don't, I don't understand. I think it's like a sort of uh, attempt to sum up all of man's learning uh, up until this point um, about the dichotomy of heaven and hell. Um, and in that sense, it kind of, it fails. You know, Where do you I mean, see yourself going? Well, out to heaven, of course. Why? Well, because I've lived a good Christian life. I mean, you've stolen I've... money from your, your mother for a start. Uh, no. A rich man shall not pass through the uh, eye of the camel. Why? Where are you going? Um, I don't believe in the afterlife. I believe in the present life. You could say that you're all revved up with no place to go. And you were saying it was all a bit slow, but this is where we uh, pick up the pace finally. Um, although, and then side one ends. If you're listening to this on an original LP, which you should be, everyone, get off your uh, iPod and uh, get on the turntable. So, with it all left up and no place to go, so really it's a bit of a lie, isn't it? Because then you've got the second side. You have got somewhere to go. <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, straight into two out of three. Ain't bad. Uh, it's not great, though, is it? No, it's not a very ambitious uh, statement there from from the loaf. Maybe he was looking forward and anticipating the critical reception to the album. True, mediocre, yeah. at best of this classic, we should say. Well, if there's uh, let me count seven tracks, so I should give this. Uh, I'm going to give this seven spins. I think that's, that's fair enough. One for each track. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I can see the logic there, although obviously... Uh, five, oh, so you agree with me? That's five, good. Five, five, finally, we agree. <laughs> finally, we agree on one. Seven each. Um, no, I'm, no. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, with Meatloaf here, and I'm going to say two out of three, which ain't bad. Um, but then obviously pro it up to five. So two out of three would be... Uh, what, three, five? 3.7 out of 5. God, you have to be so difficult, don't you? No, I'm three, just trying... 3.7 out of 5. I'm trying to keep it... Trying to keep a consistent... Fine. Consistent Fine. scoring across my... Fine. 3.7 out of 5. I give it a 7, because I'm normal. But it's still one of the all-time classics um, of, of, of rock. And, uh, yeah, I guess you could say it's it's come out of classic rock history like a bat out of hell. On a motorcycle. But I'm afraid that, you know, in terms of meatloaf, he's all revved up and he's got nowhere to go. Well, and... except for bat out of hell 2 uh, and bat out of hell 3. Oh, well, two of, out of three ain't bad. Well, it's just, well, what? Just, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um so uh, I guess that's it. Anything you want to say? You want to 
talk about your records again. I steal the ten pound. I'll give you ten pound for for the lot. That's that's on the table. Silly. Um, I tell you what, it's gone down to five. It's gone down to five. If you're going to be, I'm trying to do you a favour here. I don't even want them. I just basically, I would say to you, if you if you said, right, I'll take that ten pound, I'd be like, okay, I'll give you ten pound. I do that because I'm a nice guy, and then I just say, right, can you just put them all in the bin? Do me a favour and just chuck them all. I'm glad that this is so amusing for you. The fact is, there's an absolute gold mine here. Ten pound goes in the bin. Actually, it's five pound now. I said five pound, so it's still got five. Five pound, and uh, when you accept that offer, because. Uh, have a feeling you'll be lucky to get anything for them um then yeah is it right you were, t- you were telling me the other day when when you were bidding for this thing ten thousand records ten thousand pounds um that you just you just went in at that number you didn't even negotiate or anything and he obviously took it you you went you started the negotiation well the negotiation was that he had this huge record collection and he was going to give it to oxfam and i'm negotiated to buy it off him but what that's what i kind of what i'm trying to say here is that you he's giving it to oxfam and then you proposed giving him ten thousand pounds for it and he was just going to give it in for free so you you there wasn't a negotiation or anything like that you literally well that was said to i'll give you ten thousand pounds yeah but couldn't you have taken it and then run it through the oxfam and then you could have just you know bought it yourself or you could even taken it home no one would have even noticed right well, I mean, ten. Th- I mean, someone's he's giving, make he's 10, giving it away, records. though, isn't he? He's not 10, selling 000. it. You don't, you don't you sell don't, things to Oxfam. You can't just stash ten thousand records under your under your jacket on your way out of an evening. I mean, it would take me probably at least thirty-eight days, maybe, right, to to, to steal that many records. Which I, mean, I don't. I mean. I'm, I wouldn't, okay, we'll say you don't wouldn't do st- it anyway. I wouldn't do it anyway. Obviously. Well, say you don't have to steal them. Say you just put them through the process and they ended up on the shop floor. And then out of those 10,000 records, you bought just the ones that you wanted that were worth something. Well, they're all worth something. Well, they're all worth something, but some might not be worth a pound. So what I'm saying <laughs> is that you could just chip, cherry, but you don't have to spend 10,000 pounds. You, you could just spend like 100 pounds and get 100 records that are worth more. The collection's worth more than the sum of its parts. The value yeah, you, is in... You don't know that because you're valuing the, it. The Oxfam collect, are valuing it. There's a whole, like a, there's a whole like, collection, like a museum, like curated collection here. Okay, all right, well, let, me take, let, me, let me take this from another angle then. Let me take this from another angle. So what you're saying is that those records would be, should be worth more, correct? Correct. So therefore, you've stolen that from Oxfam. No. Because well, because they're worth more, and you said they would. Oxfam prices them up to what they're worth, so they would have all got priced up more than what they're worth, and then they would have got sold, which meant more money for the charity. Not stealing, not stealing, is it? Because he didn't give them to them. Well, it's he just... was trying to give them to them, but you've come in and given him ten thousand oh. pounds, apparently. And if they were worth this huge sum of money that you're saying they are then you've essentially taken that profit and you've decided to keep it rather than give it to the charity that it was designated for. That's business, my friend. Well, it's not business, it's charity. It's, it's not like, it's not, uh, you know, the corporate Alan, world. Alan Sugar wouldn't, it's a charity thing. Alan Sugar wouldn't balk to have done the deal that He wouldn't make his profit off charities. Charities are specifically not for profit. Well... Well, I hope you feel good about yourself. Thanks for everything, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you back on the next show.